Hey guys, it's Matt with BleepinJeep.com and today I'm going to show you how to install these new shocks on the zombie jeep. But first check out my website, BleepinJeep.com. We've got all the best off-road videos on YouTube, none of the boring stuff. We've got hats and t-shirts, muffler bearings, flux capacitors, and stickers. Also do subscribe to the YouTube channel and check out the Facebook page. Let's get started. Alright, so the first order of business is getting the shock boots installed if you're going to use those. Now on the front shocks, it's just a simple matter of sliding them over and then putting a zip tie in. Now this little top piece here clips into the top of the shock there. Slide that over and then that top piece just clips on there and then you put a zip tie on the bottom. So that's easy. Now the problem is, for some reason on the Rancho shocks, they send them just like this with the bar pins already installed. This is for the rear shock, obviously. And the bar pins are already installed, and that makes it a real booger trying to get this shock boot on here. Now, the easiest way and best way to do that is to use a press or a vise and remove that bar pin. Now, that's going to be really, really difficult, and I've got a video about bar pin eliminators, BPEs, and I'll leave the link right here, but um, I would recommend doing the bar pin eliminator if at all possible. And uh, if not, you can remove that, put the shock boot on, and then reinstall it. But there is one more option, and that is you can do it just like this. I'm not going to show you the whole thing here because it takes a good long time to get that on there. But basically, you pull this over like this, and then you just go one at a time, and you start peeling this down and some pliers would help once you get towards the end it gets really difficult to peel that over there the problem I found with doing that is uh, which is the method I used right here once you do that the top of the shock boot right here is so stretched out that it doesn't even really fit on there anymore so as I mentioned if you're going to use the boot the best way is to take that bar pin out and then reinstall it or use the bar pen eliminator video that I made to uh, to use to make bar pen eliminators but having said all of that what I'm gonna do is not use a shock boot at all a lot of people say and I tend to agree with them that the shock boot just co collects water and dust and dirt and debris and you can see why since there's not a great seal on the top there water is just going to seep down there and then you've got the sealed on the bottom right here with a zip tie and all that water and mud just ends up collecting right in here and it's going to make it rust out quicker not only that but uh, a lot of these uh, bars right here are chrome and those aren't that great this one happens to be black anodized something or other but they will rust and get pitted so for that reason a lot of people recommend just not running the shock boots at all. They say it's it's worse off than uh, having it on there. Alright, so installing new shocks isn't that bad. What you're going to do basically is just unbolt the shock and bolt the new one in. But there are a few tricks to it. Uh, first off, you don't have to take off the wheel, but it is going to be a little bit easier uh, on the front at least if you take off your tire just so you can see what's going on here. But you don't have to. Um, now the bottom is just easy unbolts. This is for the front uh, on the Cherokee anyway, which has this pin. And the top just goes up through into the engine bay, and we're going to get to that up there. But first, I'll just get a socket and start undoing the bottom here. All right, so now I've got the bottom loose there, but I'll just go ahead and leave it right there and we'll move up to the top. Alright, now we're up in the engine bay here and you'll want to look for something like this. This is the top of your shock coming through here and depending on where it's at it might be very difficult to get to. In fact, I've switched over to the passenger side here because the driver's side is completely uh, back in the back there and I can't get the video down into it. But what you're going to do is you're just going to take a wrench and there's a nut on the bottom of that shaft and you will put that on there and start to untighten it or unbolt it. Now if that shaft starts turning you'll need to take a pair of vice grips 
This one doesn't look like it's turning yet, but if it does, take a pair of vice grips and put on there, and that will keep it from turning while you unbolt the nut. All right, so it may take a while to get that nut off there, but once you do, uh, your shock should be free and ready to come out. Just make sure to take off this washer that's on top and the rubber piece that's under that. There we go. All right, now you can just get in here and pull that sucker out. Push up on it, and it comes right out. Now you can go ahead and install your new one. Now if you're going to do BPEs, bark pen eliminators, now's the time to put those on. If not, just go ahead and stick this. Well first we've got to put the rubber on there. I forgot about that. Alright, so for this side all that means is you're going to put one of these big washers that came with the shock and then one of the rubber pieces. And then we'll install it and then the other two rubber piece and metal piece go on the opposite side. Now it's also too short at the moment, so I want to pull that out. There we go. Now I can put that in and then push it up a little bit to fit that in there and then push that back up. Make sure it's tight. All right, now I can install the bolts here and then we'll go up to the top. All right, now at the top, we'll do the same thing, the rubber piece first. Now, if you look at this rubber piece, there's a little circle there that's the same size as that circle. So you wanna put that down so it'll center that. Won't be wobbling around. And then we're gonna put the metal piece on and the screw. Let's see what happened here. Oh, it fell down a little bit. So I'm just gonna push that up from the bottom and then we'll be able to tighten that screw down. All right, now I just need to tighten that all the way. Now keep in mind that to get to this, I had to remove some stuff. I had to remove my uh, coolant reservoir and I had to remove the uh, windshield wiper reservoir just to get my hand in here. So uh, you might have to remove some, some things as well. All right, so I've got that nice and tight. You can see the rubber squishing out here. I can feel from the bottom I can shake the shock and tell that's not going anywhere. Now we can move on to the rear shocks. All right, so now we're ready to remove the rear shocks and uh, the rear's not that bad. So the first thing I'll do is just remove the bottom here. All right, now it might take some effort if those have been on there for a while, but you should be able to just pull that right off of there. There we go. Now, as you can see up there, I've got my homemade bar pen eliminators up there now. Remember, if you want to make those yourself, you can check out this video here. Uh, you can also buy bar pen eliminators. Uh, they're probably about 50 bucks a pair or something like that, I'd say. But as you can see, the reason for those is to get rid of that bar pen so that you don't have to deal with that. And instead, you have a bolt that goes right through the shock eye and... Uh, that way you don't have to deal with the bar pen, so that's why they're called bar pen eliminators. So, uh, if you're not going to use those, you're just going to take out these bolts here. I believe on this Jeep those are about 15 millimeter or 14, something like that. And then you'll just put the bar pen up in there. But for me, since I've got the BPEs, I'm going to take out this bolt. Then I also have to take out the bar pen because Rancho so kindly installed that for me for some reason. And then I'll just put the bolt right back through. Alright, so now if you're not using bar pen eliminators, you can just stick that right back up in there, put the bolts in, and tighten it down. But if you are using the bar pen eliminators, we will go ahead and put those on, and then tighten the bar pen back down. Uh, you can do that, or um, I could have just taken out the bolt, but I find it easier to take the whole bar pen out, replace uh, everything, and then just put it back in because getting that bolt out was being a little bit tough up there.
All right, so here it is with the BPE attached again. And it helps if you put the bottom on first, that way you don't have to deal with it falling on your head. And now I'll just install it the way I took it off. And of course the bottom, first the washer and then the net. Once I get that tightened up, I am all finished. Alright guys, now that's how you install some shocks on the Zombie Jeep. Don't forget to check out the website bleepinjeep.com. We've got all the best off-road videos on YouTube and on the boring stuff. We've got hats and t-shirts, muffler bearings, flux capacitors, and stickers. So check it out, bleepinjeep.com. Do subscribe to the YouTube channel as well and check out the Facebook page. Leave your comments below and we'll see you next time.